Hi students, as a part of corrosion controlling methods, today I am going to discuss with you about uh, one of the process which is a part of hot dipping method, which is used for uh, corrosion controlling. So that particular method about which I am going to explain today, after the galvanization, which is also a part of hot dipping, is the tinning process. So this particular process is called as either tinning or tin plated or tin plating or cathodic protein. Cathodic protein. So this particular method is called as tinning or tin plating or cathodic plating. So tinning, why it is called as tinning? First we have to discuss that. The name itself is self-explanatory. It is a process of coating the tin on the surface of the base metal. Now what is the base metal? I have clearly explained while explaining the corrosion controlling method that is sacrificial anodic protection. The metal hose corrosion is going to be controlled or avoided is nothing but the base metal. The process of coating the tin on the surface of the base metal is called as tinning. So that is the reason this, this particular method is uh, so called as tinning. Now let us see why it is also called as tin plating. This particular process of the hot dipping method involves plating the tin on the surface of the base metal. So that is the reason this particular tinning is also called as tin plating. Now we have discussed why it is also called as cathodic plating. So this particular process of tinning is so called as cathodic coating because here the tin is being coated on the base metal and with respect to the base metal the tin acts as cathode. So since the tin that is coating metal acts as a cathode with respect to the coating metal that is the reason this particular tinning or tin plating is also called as cathodic coating. It is also called as cathodic coating. So coming again simply the process of coating the tin on the surface of the base metal is called as tinning process which is one of the process which is a part of hot dipping method which is one of the corrosion controlling method. Now let us see the process involved in this particular method. The process involved in this uh, particular method that is which is so called as tinning can be illustrated in the following manner. So let us say that our base metal is uh, the steel sheet. So the base metal is the steel sheet means what um, we are going to avoid or control the corrosion of the steel sheet. Now this is steel sheet which is the base metal. First of all what we need to do is we have to remove all the impurities which are present on the base metal. That is, we have to remove all the scales, greasy materials, dirt, dust, so every impurity from the surface of the base metal, which is the, the steel sheet in this particular process. Right. So, in order to remove all the impurities from the surface of the steel sheet, which is the base metal, initially the base metal is passed into the acid bath comprised of dilute sulfuric acid. Acid bath comprised of dilute sulfuric acid. So already we are well versed that sulfuric acid can remove almost all the impurities which have been accumulated on the surface of any of the substance. So now after passing the steel sheet which is the base metal in the acid bath comprised of the dilute sulfuric acid we have to pickle it. We have to pickle it. So during the pickling of uh, the base metal steel sheet in the dilute sulfuric acid whatever the scales, 
greasy material dirt dust particles and other impurities will peel off will peel off and uh, they enter into the dilute sulfuric acid now whatever the steel sheet which is coming out from the acid bath comprised of the dilute sulfuric acid is free of all the impurities such as scales greasy material dirt and dust particles now whatever the steel sheet uh, which is free of all these impurities should be passed into the hot molten tin through the zinc chloride flux the hot molten tin is covered with the zinc chloride flux now what we need to do whatever the steel sheet which is free of all the impurities which have been peeled in the dilute sulfuric acid should be passed into the container comprised of hot molten tin which is the coating metal through the zinc chloride flux now after passing the steel sheet which is the base metal in the, into the hot molten tin the coat of tin will accumulate on the surface of the steel sheet the coat of tin is formed on the surface of the steel sheet now what is the purpose of the zinc chloride flux here what is the purpose of zinc chloride flux Zinc fluoride flux uh, will facilitate the good adhesion between the base metal and the coating metal. Now, what we are doing, whatever the base metal, that is, which is the steel sheet, which is coming out from the acid bath, which is free of all the impurities such as uh, scales, greasy material, dirt, and the dust particles, uh, is being immersed in the hot molten tin. Now, the coating of the coating metal tin has been taken place on the surface of the base metal steel sheet now there is no guarantee that whatever the coating metal tin which has been coated on the surface of the base metal is firmly adhering firmly sticking onto the surface of the base metal firmly binding onto the surface of the base metal now what we have to ensure we have to ensure the 100% binding of the coating metal on the surface of the base metal that is we have to ensure the 100% binding of the tin on the surface of the steel sheet now that particular job is being done by the zinc chloride flux zinc chloride flux bind the coating metal tin on the surface of the base metal steel sheet by which the coating metal tin firmly sticks on the surface of the base metal steel sheet that is the purpose of um, the zinc chloride flux now the the coat of the tin has been formed on the surface of the base metal that is uh, the steel sheet has been formed has been formed and with the help of the zinc chloride forms zinc chloride flux it has been firmly bonded with the, the base metal. Now that should be passed into the palm oil. That should be passed into the container in which palm oil is present. Now what is the purpose of the palm oil? Palm oil here will avoid the or prevents the oxidation of hot molten coating metal. It avoids the oxidation of hot molten coating metal means hot molten tin which has been accumulated on the surface of uh, the base metal so in order to avoid the oxidation of hot molten tin which is the coating metal on the surface of the base metal it is passed that is uh, the tin plated sheet has to be passed uh, into the Palm oil in order to avoid the oxidation of a hot, hot molten coating metal tin on the surface of the base metal, which is steel sheet. Now, coating of the coating metal tin has been occurred on the surface of the base metal that is steel sheet. 
Now there is no guarantee that whatever the coating metal which has been coated on the surface of the base metal steel sheet is uniformly formed on the surface of the steel sheet. It's uniformly adhered, uniformly sticked on the surface of the steel sheet. So it may it, it gets coated like this. It may it may coated like this. That is, excess amount of the tin gets accumulated on the base metal. This is the base metal is the steel sheet and tin is the coating metal. So I have depicted the, the tin. With the help of the green ink, so green ink nothing but the tin coating metal and the steel sheet is depicted in the uh, red ink. Red ink. Now, this is the excess amount of uh, the tin coating metal which has been accumulated on the surface of uh, the base metal. Now, due to this excess accumulation of the tin which is the coating metal on the surface of the base metal steel sheet, what happens is homogeneous layer or uniform layer of uh, the coating metal will not be formed on the surface of the base metal which is the steel sheet in this particular case. So what we need to do and why there is, there is a non-uniformity of the coating metal on the surface of the base metal. Non-uniformity is there on the surface of the base metal because of excess accumulation of the tin on the surface of the base metal that is because of excess amount of the coating metal excess accumulation of the coating metal on the surface of the base metal which is the steel sheet once uh, excess amount of the coating metal which has been accumulated on the surface of the base metal which is the steel sheet is being removed being peeled off then the uniform layer of the coating metal is formed on the surface of the base metal which is the steel sheet. So in order to get the uniform layer of uh, the coating metal on the surface of the base metal what we need to do is uh, the tin plated sheet should be rolled with the hole with the help of uh, the rollers should be rolled uh, with the help of the rollers. Whenever it is being rolled with the help of the rollers, whatever the excess amount of the tin which is responsible for the non-uniform layer on the surface of the base metal which is the steel sheet will peel off and it is collected in another container. So by which now the uniform layer of the coating metal gets accumulated on the surface of the base metal. So green is nothing but the coating metal, red is nothing but the steel sheet. Now the uniform layer of the coating metal has been formed on the surface of the base metal. Now dear students, I have clearly explained in the, in the galvanization process that galvanized sheets cannot be used for making the kitchen utensils in which food stuff is being preserved but tin plated sheets which are so obtained with the help of tinning process can be used for making the kitchen utensils in which the food stuff can be stored food stuff can be preserved the reason is in the case of galvanization in the case of galvanization, zinc is coated on the surface of the base metal. Whereas in the case of tinning, tin is coated on the surface of the base metal. Now, one thing is common in uh, both the galvanization as well as uh, the tinning process. The first step is quite common in the case of galvanization and tinning. That is pickling of for the steel sheet in the dilute sulfuric acid in order to remove the scales, greasy materials, dirt, dust and other impurities. So this is the first operation which is being done in either the galvanization or thinning method. Thinning. Now whenever the dilute sulfuric acid is used to remove the impurities, 
and uh, whatever the coating metal which is being used in the galvanization process what is the coating metal which is being used in the galvanization process of galvanizing zinc is being used that the zinc may undergo not may it will undergo zinc will undergo dissol dissolution in the sulfuric acid molecules right dissolution in the sulfuric acid molecules resulting in the formation of toxic compounds so since it is dissolving in the sulfuric acid molecules resulting in the formation of the toxic compounds these toxic compounds containing the galvanized sheets cannot be used for making the kitchen utensils in which the food stuff is being preserved but in the case of tinning even though we are using the dilute sulfuric acid in order to remove the impurities the coating metal tin will not dissolve in the sulfuric acid because it is cathodic so since the coating metal tin will not dissolve in the sulfuric acid molecules there is no question of formation of toxic compound when there is no question of formation of toxic compounds definitely whatever the sheets which are so formed after the tinning process which are so called as tin plated sheets can be used for making the kitchen utensils in which food stuff is being preserved right and uh, the galvanization is called as anodic coating and the staining is called as cathodic coating because in the case of uh, galvanization zinc is the coating metal and with respect to base metal zinc uh, zinc act as anode that is the reason galvanization is anodic coating and whereas the staining is cathodic coating because in the case of the staining process coating metal is the tin and tin act as cathode with respect to the base metal so that is the reason tinning is called as cathode i hope you understood sir thank you